Hey there everyone. So on this week of education I wanted to continue the train of the vitamins that I've been discussing in previous videos. And the topic of this video is going to be that of the fat-soluble vitamins, which are vitamins A, D, E and K. The reason why I wanted to discuss these vitamins are because A, people with eating disorders can become deficient in these vitamins, and B, the clinical syndromes that become apparent as a result of these deficiencies are actually quite interesting and I feel that you guys should at least have an idea of what's going on. So, the fat-soluble vitamins are just that. They are fat-soluble. They are soluble in fat, which means that they can dissolve in fat. So people with eating disorders can obviously become deficient in these vitamins because they don't have much fat in their body, which means that they are unable to store much of these vitamins. Contrary to what their name suggests, these vitamins aren't normally found in you know, fatty foods that you might, you might think. So, for example, vitamin A is found in things like carrots, leafy green vegetables, liver, vitamin D. That's the main vitamin that you get from the sun. You know, they always say you get at least, I think it's 15 minutes of sun per day in order to get the vitamin D requirement that you need. But you can also get a, a different form of vitamin D from like mushrooms, for example. Vitamin E and K, uh, you can get from a multitude of things. So, yeah, these vitamins are actually quite interesting. And the main the main thing that, you know, people people without eating disorders tend to have trouble with are actually excess of these vitamins and that's because they've got a decent supply of fat and if th these vitamins get stored in the fat you can imagine that toxic levels can be accumulated quite easily and these things can continue to leach out into your circulation and then you can get some problems going on. So vitamin A as I said previously you can get this from things like carrots, leafy green vegetables and liver and the actual technical name of vitamin A is called retinol. And people say, you know, get enough carrots in your diet and you'll be able to see in the dark. And there is some truth to that. And that's because retinol is the main component of the pigment in your rod cells, they're called. And the rod cells are important for being able to see black and white. But the pigment is called retinal in this case. And it... It's derived from vitamin A originally, but it's just a, a chemical conversion, really. And when light hits your eye, it actually goes into your rod cells at the back of your um, eye, called the retina, and into the rod cell, where it hits the pigment, called retinal, and that causes the pigment to essentially break down, and that causes a sort of chain of events that enables these rod cells to undergo a change in uh, voltage, just like in a battery really. But unlike elsewhere in your body, there is quite, your eye is quite weird. Um, normally when you, know, you get touched somewhere, you, know, you can feel it because the nerves get excited and they become depolarized, which means that positive charge goes into the nerve cell. And then that causes the um, thing to propagate all the way up into your spinal cord, up to your brain, your brain can distinguish that as you, you're being touched. In your eye, it's quite different. And what happens is, when the pigment breaks down, the charge change that actually happens is that of hyperpolarization, which means that positive charge actually goes out of the cell. And that causes depolarization of the cell that joins onto the rod cell. And this happens by a process called disinhibition, which means that the rod cells are normally inhibiting these um, secondary cells. But when these rod cells become hyperpolarized, they become less active. So they inhibit these secondary cells less, which means that these cells can become more active. It's quite, it's quite confusing, but you can see how it's quite intricate and quite, quite, um, quite interesting, actually. So these cells then become depolarized, and I think these go on to another set of cells which then become depolarized and they go to the brain which enables you to see and this enables you to see black and white. So the rod cells are important because they are active at low light levels which you know comes back to the story of eat your carrots and you can see in the dark because these rod cells are activated by very low light levels and indeed with vitamin A deficiency, one of the problems that people have is something called nyctalopia, which is nighttime blindness, 
What are the other um, things that vitamin A does? Well, it is an antioxidant, which means that it essentially breaks down reactive oxy oxygen species, um, like the superoxide molecule. And these, these reactive oxygen species are really detrimental to the proteins in your cells, to the, um, the cell membrane that covers your cells, and essentially they are inhibiting things like cancer to develop. And that links to another function of vitamin A, which is that of inhibiting something called squamous metaplasia, which is something that actually happens in people who smoke, for example, in their lungs. So what happens is, you've got a, a cell type, let's just say that these cells are co columnar in shape, which means that they're literally just shaped like a column, or they're cuboidal, which means they're more shaped like a cube. If there's some sort of chronic irritation that goes on, these cells can undergo something called squamous metaplasia, where they go from this shape to that of a very flat cell. And that is a precursor for cancer, really. So, what are the other problems that you can get with vitamin A deficiency? You can get things like dry and very scaly skin. And you, you, you see this commonly with people with eating disorders. Their skin becomes very dry. Um, and, you know, you can see cracks developing. This is inherently related to that of the vitamin A deficiency, but it's also related to another, you know, a lot of other problems. The other thing is that your cornea can de um, degenerate, and this is called keratomalacia. And your cornea is, you know, the, the thing on the very outside of your eye, the thing that the light first hits to enable it to um, converge onto the retina. The other thing is that it can cause... Um, immunosuppression, so your immune system becomes less strong, so you're more susceptible to a number of infections. So the next vitamin that I'd like to talk about is vitamin D. So vitamin D, as I said previously, you get this from sun exposure, and the important precursor molecule for vitamin D is cholesterol. So you can imagine that people with eating disorders who are, you know, avidly skipping things that have cholesterol in them can become deficient in this vitamin quite easily. So, I've got this little drawing come out. So, cholesterol um, is the main precursor, which goes to vitamin D, and that's where the sun comes in. So, cholesterol goes to vitamin D3, called cholecalciferol. Now, I said previously you can get vitamin D from other sources, like mushrooms. And, in this case, it's vitamin D2, and it's called ergocalciferol. Now... When vitamin D enters the circulation, it first hits the liver, where it gets converted to 25-dihydroxycholecalciferol, and this is the main storage form of vitamin D. Now, when you have things like a reduction in calcium in your blood, uh, the hormone that gets synthesized is called parathyroid hormone, which is synthesized here in your parathyroid glands, which, you know, I'm pointing at the thyroid gland, but the parathyroids are right behind the thyroid gland. Now what happens is, parathyroid hormone goes to the kidney, where it increases the activity, and, con and this causes the conversion of 25-hydroxycalciferol to 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol, and this is the active form of vitamin D3. So, what happens um, is that when this, when this gets activated, it increases the amount of calcium and increases the amount of phosphate that is absorbed from the gut. And that essentially increases the amount of calcium in your blood, as well as that of phosphate. And this feeds back, so I said previously that parathyroid hormone, which I'll abbreviate to as PTH, positively acts on that. Yeah. Now when this happens, uh, the increase in calcium actually inhibits parathyroid hormone. So that stops, and that stops, so you're back to a normal level of calcium in your blood. So that's how the, the internal balance is essentially maintained. So what happens when you're deficient in vitamin D? Well, the first thing that you can imagine happening is the amount of calcium in your blood goes down, and this is called hypocalcemia. Now, this is actually quite dangerous, because a reduction in the amount of calcium in your blood makes your muscles very excitable, and this can cause them to contract without you wanting them to. And this is called tetany. And when this happens, you know, you can get very unpleasant cramping sensations. But the, the dangerous things that can happen is where, you know, the muscles in your larynx, for example, they can undergo tetany, which means you are unable 
to open your vocal cords to allow you to breathe, and that can essentially cause you to stop breathing. So this can actually become very, very dangerous indeed. And it can also play around with the rhythms in your heart, and this can lead to something called torsade de point, which um, essentially means that your ventricular rhythm is all out of whack, and this can lead to something called ventricular fibrillation, or it's commonly known as V-fib, and this can lead to your heart essentially failing, and you know, you're unfortunately dying. So, you know, this is by no means a small feat. The other thing that um, a chronic reduction in calcium in your blood can lead to is something called um, osteomalacia, which is equivalent to that of rickets in children, which essentially uh, means that your bones lose calcium and may become very, very bendy. And this can lead to deformations and, you know, can, can be very debilitating indeed.